All right. Um, so um, good afternoon. My name is Ashton Levitt, and uh, the, what the movie we decided to watch is Turning Red. Um, it's a Pixar film released last year, and it follows the main character, Mei Li, who is a 13-year-old Chinese-Canadian girl who lives with her family. So for my um, part, I decided to go with uh, question one, which deals with uh, the cultural context in which the action takes place. So the cultural context of the film is that it takes place in uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada in the year 2002. Um, also, um, her family is Chinese. So that's the other uh, cultural aspect of this film. Um, so if we actually take a look at um, the country comparisons, we can see that, first of all, Canada's um, individual individual score is much higher than Canada. It's a much more individualistic culture. Um, and power distance is a lot lower than um, China's. That's another um, important um, cultural dimension that I'll get into. Um, but for individualism, I believe um, this has a lot to do, um, that this cultural context has a lot to do with the conflicts in this film, um, simply due to the fact that um, for for one thing, um, her her mother is shown to be um, very protective and strict. Um, her mother um, values um, Chinese cultural values, more collectivist attitudes, um, versus May, who just kind of wants to do her own thing, and she she kind of wants to be more a part of the um, the wider individual uh, Canadian culture as a whole. Uh, a big example of this in the film is um, is the whole is the whole thing about her wanting to go see a concert um, with her friends, but her mother doesn't want her to go because she thinks it's a waste of time. And they also have to deal with a family curse that'll turn her into a giant red panda if she loses control of her emotions. Um, her mother doesn't trust her to keep her emotions. So in that respect, um, uh, May's mother um, is definitely putting the putting the group above the wants of the individual. Um, so she's trying to do what's best for her entire family rather than what um, just letting May do what she wants. Um, and that kind of um, bleeds into another um, important aspect of, um, of our cultural dimensions, which is power distance. China is a much um, higher power distance culture, which means authority um, is re and respect for elders, especially parents is uh, much more emphasized. Um, as a matter of fact, the very first line in the movie is um, that the, the number one rule in May's family is to honor uh, your parents. So that immediately um, introduces us to that aspect of Chinese culture where um, parents are to be um, honored and respected. Um, she Throughout the movie, it's um, shown that she does her best to um, try and please her mother and not disappoint her. She even throws her friends under the bus at one point when she lied about going to a party to get money um, for, for the concert. And she didn't want to um, disappoint her mother um, and let her know that it was actually her idea to do that in the first place. But a major event happens in the climax of the film where we see that she actually is more, learns to be more confrontational um, toward her mother. She lets her know her true feelings and she admits that she lied. So I'll play the clip here so we can see. May, are you hurt? I'm not your little May May anymore. I lied, Mom. What? It was my idea to hustle the panda. My idea to go to Tyler's party. It was all me. I like boys. I like loud music. I like giant. So, yeah, we can see that that's very unusual for especially a 13 year old girl to say you know, directly to her mother in a, in a high power distance um, culture such as uh, such as China's. So um, definitely, I believe that the Canadian cultural context really kind of uh, rubs off on May in this way, where she she tends to act more individual and and. In a, in a sense, more more defiant towards these uh, sorts of things. So I believe that's um, a lot of the main conflict stems from these cultural differences.
So um, with that, I um, leave it to Samuel. So my question that I had was number three, and my question was pretty much, uh, does the identity of the main characters change over the course of the movie? And I'd say definitely. Uh, the first change that I really noticed in the movie wasn't a mental change, but rather a physical change, because, of course, May, from, as in she's coming from Chinese descent, she has regular black hair, but once she gains the power of the red panda, her regular black hair changes to red, and it's a permanent change for her. It never really goes back to being black. But I'd say that the regular identity transformation over the course of the movie is that May chooses to embrace the red panda and live with her anger and unfiltered emotions. And she chooses the panda because it helps her to come out of her shell and see the true version of herself. She had to come clean to her mom about lying to her about going out of the house. She always tells her mom, I'm going to mathletes, but really she's going to parties and she's trying to make money. But she also tells her mom she isn't the cute little May May anymore, as we saw in that scene. And she tells her mom to deal with it. But she's not the only character that goes through an identity transformation in the movie, because I'd also argue that her mother goes through a transformation in the movie. Her mother starts off as this very strict, very professional woman who is overprotective of her daughter. But throughout the course of the movie, she learns to let go. Her mother is so protective of her daughter due to her troubled relationship with her own mother, May's grandmother. When she was close to May's age, she lashed out at her mother for not accepting her boyfriend, and their relationship became very rocky. So not wanting the same thing to happen to her own daughter, May's mom unintentionally made the same mistakes in raising May to be perfect, just as she had been. But at the end of the movie, May realizes that the red panda has caused her mother much more harm than herself. And she helps her mom to finally find closure and to make amends with her grandmother so the family can be at peace. I didn't know good guys. Okay. Um, I did question number four. Um, actually, number five. I can't hear you. We can't hear you, Oscar. Does that affect okay, how no, the language is used? Um, I noticed many communication interactions between all the main characters. Um, Mei Ling in this movie, in the Disney's movie Turning Red, is going through a transition uh, where she's uh, she ends up uh, finding out that she <laughs> turns into a red panda when she feels emotions. So it's a coming of age movie and film. Um, she tries to put out her independence right away from the beginning of the movie, stating how independent she is. She does what she wants type deal. Like she's living her best life. Right. Um, and then it switches over into the, the way she communicates with her family. Uh, her mother, uh, the mother, the relationship she has with her mother is appears to be a good relationship, although um, uh, there's respect there. There's also the fear of fully communicating to her her true feelings or what is going on or what the things that she's doing. So her mother, uh, the relationship she has with her mother is um, from, I believe, a position of power. Uh, she ends up... Um, using more of an indirect communication style where she has her head up, shoulders back, uh, walks very straight um, with command presence, what you would call command presence, and she commands presence. So uh, that in turn uh, demands respect from Mei Ling. And even her father has this respect for, for Mei Ling's mom, uh, where you know, he kind of goes along with, with what mom says and that kind of stuff. So um, her family is very structured. And although they are a Chinese family living in Canada, 
Um, their culture has followed them and it's deeply rooted in their family. Uh, a lot of respect again. And, and you could see where the mom gets this indirect communication style is because later on we get to meet uh, Mei Ling's grandmother and she has the very same type of style where she stands straight, head up, shoulders back, commands presence, just has that, that walk where you see her and you say, man, uh, good evening, hello, she commands respect. So you can also see that Mei Ling has a very different relationship with her father. Her father is more quiet, observes, but it almost feels like Mei Ling can open up about certain things that she couldn't open up with mom about. And so he's more of a listener. Um, his, you could see at one point that he gets a, uh, uh, eye to eye with her when when he's explaining you know the transition that her mother went through and how they shared a lot of things in common more than she thinks um again family is very structured uh due to the fact i believe that in the chinese culture there's a lot more structure within the family uh the elders are respected and you could see this in the movie i think disney's pixar did excellent in doing that and portraying the Chinese culture. Um, again, although the, the, the posture to promote power over uh, Mei Li by her mother later on uh, switches up uh, because she kind of stands up to her and says, look, I need to be able to communicate with you. And uh, watching it from a communications point lens, I would say, or a communication lens, I think they did they did an excellent job uh, pointing out different communication styles and as well as a viewer, we were able to see the transitions. Um, great film. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jose Reynoso and I answered question number seven, which they asked us to feel free to explain how the movie reflects other important aspects of the intercultural communication. In Disney's Turning Red, Mei Li, a Chinese-Canadian teenager, goes through magical changing events The story in the story. They explain how Mei Li's ancestor possessed a special power of turning into the infamous uh, Chinese Red Panda. Aside from this amazing transformation Mei Li experienced, I believe that Pixar was able to represent the Chinese culture in a beautiful outlook. I will explain how Pixar was able to depict intercultural value by the use of colors, geographical animals located in China, and show the world the beauty of the cultural norms and Chinese communication patterns. To begin with this analysis, Pixar focused immensely on the red and yellow color scheme. If you've ever gone to Chinatown, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, these colors are used as symbols, and this color combination is primarily used in the Chinese culture because of the meaning and representation of the color. Red and yellow symbolizes happiness, which is particularly an important aspect to have in one's life. Aside of, I'm sorry, aside from uh, happiness, it also symbolizes good fortune, which is always a good combination to have on your side. During the Chinese New Year's, you can see the colors red and yellow on everything, from the beautiful red dragon prop that is moved and managed by people during the Chinese parades to the red Chinese lanterns hanging above you. This is clearly a beautiful representation of the Chinese culture. Now that we understand the symbols used in the movie, we focus on the animal in which Mei Li transforms into when she reaches early adulthood. The animal Mei Li transforms into is the Chinese red panda. These adorable raccoon-like mammals live within the provinces of Yunnan and Sichuan, which is located in China. The red panda is a popular animal within the Chinese culture because it is considered to give good luck. They are also considered a sign of good health, which is a good sign to have. I really like the fact that Pixar did their research while creating this movie. They chose an animal that is only found in the regions of Asia, which is what makes the red Chinese panda the best animal to represent the Chinese culture in this movie. Lastly, we can see the high context values that are carried by the characters in the movie Turning Red. Throughout the movie, there is a lot of interaction between Mei Li's parents and how they react to certain situations. Mei Li's parents embody the high-tech con uh, context culture 
because they show their collectivism within their community and their family. They speak to Mei Li in a manner where they are saving face because they do not want to hurt Mei Li's feelings. They, the Lees also manage a temple where they pray to their ancestors, exhibit community tours, which is considered to be an in-group activity. They also use indirect style communication, which hides Mei Li's parents' true intention. During their conversation, there's also a lot of intuitive thought pattern process, which relies on the sensory data of the situation they're going through. As you can see, Pixar understood the difference between high and low context communication, and they were able to portray this through their characters based on their ethnicity. Thank you so much for your time. This will conclude our presentation.